This is geometry semester one. It's unit number one, shapes. And this is the fifth lesson called Parallel, Perpendicular, Planes, Points, Lines, Segments, Practice. It's on creatormath.com under the geometry tab. You might have to type into Google creatormath.weebly.com to find the website. Sometimes it can be hard to find. Copy the following problems into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. So just to model for you where those notes are. So let's go backwards here a little bit. Go to creatormath.weebly.com. The home page looks like this. All of your composition book stuff is on this home page, but we need the notes for geometry. So we're going over to geometry. Pass by the vocabulary stuff, which is up front. You need this PDF to answer all of your vocabulary practices, and it, the entire PDF will open for you, hopefully, via the Internet, and you can see all of the words that we're using for our vocab for the entire year on that document. Um, we're scrolling past semester two. It's up front for an individual reason. By the time you see this, it'll probably be second, as it should be. Semester one. This is the geometry table of contents. It goes on pages two through six of your composition book. If you haven't copied it there already, which you should have by now, but don't worry, just go and copy it if you haven't. Every line of this goes on pages two through six of your comp book. This one is shapes standard. This is the unit. These are the lessons. This one is number five right here. Parallel and perpendicular planes, points, lines, segments. It goes on this page of your comp book. Make sure and check the current table of contents to find out these pages. It'll probably be different by the time you watch this video. The notes are right here, and the video solution will be right here. The problems we're doing now are right here. So if I click Notes, oh, there we go. Sometimes it takes a second to load, and sometimes I have to do it twice. So this says number four. I want number five. Did I click the wrong one? Or is there or is there an error here? Looks like there's an error here. Looks like I don't have number five on here. So we want number five, and I will fix this by the time you get to it, all right? But it will have the notes for this um, problem set. All right, so let's go ahead and do the problems. It won't be as great without sort of previewing the notes, but it'll be fine. So given the following figure, what is it called? It's a line. So a line is... Um, it's this kind of kind of drawing. You just draw a line, but we put arrowheads on both sides. Why? Because a line, by definition, extends in both directions forever. It goes out to infinity. So a line has some unique uh, characteristics. It's infinitely thin. I know there's a thickness there, but the actual definition is infinitely thin, perfectly straight, and it goes in both directions forever. Now, if you think about that shape, there is no example of a line in reality. This shape, or in this case, this symbol, or this image, or this idea, does not exist in reality. It exists in your mind, because nothing is infinitely thin, nothing is per perfectly straight, and nothing goes in both directions forever in our physical world. So I want you to understand that math, and this is maybe part of the challenge of growing up with math, it changes from something physical, like 2 plus 2, as you can count out, to something that is now conceptual. It's in your mind. And a line is a simple example of that, and we'll talk about more as we go through the shapes and geometry. So, given the following figure, what is it called? This one does not have arrowheads on both sides. This one's got points. The points designate that there's a start and a stop. This is called a segment, or a line segment. Okay, you can also have line segment here. Lines, line segment, or just segment, is fine also. Given the following figure, what is it called? Oh, this is it right here. So this is a point. It's just a dot. It's a point. And a point has no mass. No, no. Um, it takes up no, no area here. It is, you know, infinitely small. It is, again, something that exists in your mind, but it's a designation for us to have a starting or stopping point and something that we can draw a segment on, right, like this. We can draw, I think we're going to come up with a ray pretty soon where we have continuing in one direction, forever and starting at a point. So let's continue. All right, what is the following figure? Given the following figure, what is it called? It is called a plane. So a plane is, we draw it like this at an, at an angle. 
and sort of in a three-dimensional, um, and then we sort of put a squiggly line in it. That's what they're trying to represent here. A, pl a plane is a perfectly flat surface extending in all directions forever, and it is infinitely thin. Again, there is no example of this in our physical world. It exists in your mind, right? So that's fascinating to me because, you know, we always grow up in math going, oh, just make it concrete, right? Well, it gets a little bit more difficult. And, you know, teachers will say, look at the wall of the classroom. That's an example of a plane. It's a flat surface. But you and I know that wall ends. It's not infinitely thin. And no way is it perfectly flat. So that's just sort of a, an illustration of, you know, sort of the idea of a plane. But the actual plane does not exist in our physical world. So, um, Given the following figure, what is being shown? So this is in the notes too, and I apologize, I couldn't bring it up for you. That is something I'm going to have to fix, and I apologize for that. But um, these are two lines. They've got arrowheads on both sides. They exist in a plane, which is a perfectly flat surface, infinitely thin, and going in all directions forever. And they have these tick marks on them, here and here, two arrowheads and two arrowheads. Now, these tick marks tell us that these two lines are parallel. So these are parallel lines, and we could have used only one tick mark. I'm not totally sure why I used two here, but we could use one arrow tick mark to show that these are parallel. Now, if you had a different set, say you had a, a pair of parallel lines here, I would use two on this because these, are in a different, these two are parallel to each other, but not parallel to these two. That's why you would use one arrow tick mark on these two and two arrow tick marks on these. Given the following figure what is shown, these are perpendicular lines. They cross at 90 degrees, and so it's perpendicular lines, and I might have put lines here, might have put lines here, for parallel lines, perpendicular lines, um, and again, they exist, it might be better if I drew it like this, here are the perpendicular lines. Here's the 90 degree angle. And here they are, whoops, let's try to make this, lying in a plane. They exist in this plane. It's infinitely thin. It's perfectly flat. And it extends in that direction, that direction, that direction, and that direction forever. Awesome concept for your brain to chew on. Okay, given the following figure, what it's called. This one starts at a point, and it goes in one direction forever. This is a ray. So this is a pretty easy um, lesson. It's just the different shapes, but now we will start to use these shapes in the rest of geometry to do a lot more complicated things. So um, make sure you're matching up the title of this lesson. Let me get this to calm down a little. Geometry, semester one. This is the unit on shapes, and this is the fifth lesson, parallel, perpendicular, planes, points, lines, and segments practice on creatormath.com under the geometry tab.